So in this video, I want to talk a little bit about the realities of 3D printing wargaming miniatures. So maybe you wanted to print some Warhammer figures or some tabletop figures, some fancy figures, whatever it is that you fancy. Maybe you've seen some of the memes online about printer go burr. Maybe you've been put off by the Games Workshop price hikes. Every time there is one of those, I always see in the forums filled up with people go 3D print, 3D print, 3D print, 3D print. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to make this video is because there's loads of new people looking to either get into resin 3D printing or they've gotten into it and there's a few things that they wanted to find out as well. The big thing that prompted me to make this video is that recently one of my friends who's been watching some of my videos and just getting into FDM 3D printing also purchased a resin 3D printer. And when you showed me that you'd ordered it, I was just like, well, first off, what are you going to print with it? Or where are you going to put it? And what about all these safety bits behind it as well? And I realized that channels like mine sometimes make the movie magic a little bit too magical and cut out all the hardships and the boring bits. So it's time to take a little bit of responsibility and actually talk about some of the realities of resin 3D printing. So I'm going to walk you through the steps of resin 3D printing a miniature. Now, resin 3D printing is actually really surprisingly simple but there's a lot of complexities that go around it and it can become really difficult as well so just bear that in mind and safety is probably your number one thing so first off you've purchased your brand new resin 3d printer and now it's time to get a miniature printed off so here's how it goes you find the files that you want to print and you can find those from places like my mini factory you can get them on patreon there's loads of different places so you download your file and you import them into your slicer of choice a couple of different slices that people use. The main two are Chitu Box and Lychee. Now both of those have free versions, they're really easy to work with, and they will work and give you pretty much all the features you need without having to pay for anything to get something downloaded and then onto your 3D printer. Basically all it does, it's a software that will show you your print bed, so you choose the printer that you're using, and then you can tinker with some of the settings. You don't actually need to do too much tinkering unless you're using different types of resin, but that's a subject for different types of videos. So you download your file, you throw them into the slice that you're using, you will organize them all as well. So on your print bed, you'll always see people go, I'm gonna use the whole print bed that I've paid for, all those sorts of memes and pictures and stuff like that get posted on Reddit all the time. And basically you put all your models onto there, you then export that file, and in most cases, you then export that file onto a USB stick and plug it into your printer. You then hit print and you are good to go. There are other steps before that as well that you'll have taken, but obviously we're gonna assume at this point, you've got your printer and it's calibrated and good to go. You then set it off to do its printing. Now, one step that is really, really important, doesn't get talked about enough before we move on to one of the next steps of 3D printing a miniature is just having a place to put your 3D printer. Now, the basic thing to remember when it comes to resin, and I'm not gonna go diving into all the scientifics of that because I'm not a scientist, I don't have the full understanding of that and I can't make those claims. But basically, before resin is cured, so before it's hit by a UV source, it is ultimately toxic. So you've got to bear that in mind. So you will need to make sure that you are fully gloved up, masked up, respirator, mask, all of that needs to be taken into consideration. You also need to consider not just the stuff that you are wearing, so you know, making sure it doesn't touch your skin, making sure you're not breathing in those fumes, making sure you definitely don't get it into your eyes because that will be a disaster. You've got to consider the place that you have your 3D printer. I see all sorts of pictures online of people going, oh, is this space good that I could maybe put my resin 3D printer? And it's next to their bed, or it's in a living space, or just anything like that. And no matter what sort of precautions you take, so for me, I have my resin 3D printers outside in a garage. They are in a grow tent, which helps me to contain everything. And the reason I do this is A, it helps me to monitor the temperature and keep it at a good consistent temperature because you also need to do that. It helps me to contain the fumes as well and then I can exhaust those fumes outside. It also helps me to contain all of the resin spillages or bits of mess or drips and stuff like that into the grow tent when I'm taking things off of the build plate and cleaning them up. If you have them in a living space, you will ultimately start to contaminate that living space, whether or not that's through fumes, whether or not that's through drippages, whether or not that's just through everything else that happens. And you also need to consider the people in your workspace as well. I have children, and no matter what I tell those children, if they have access to the resin 3D printers, they're gonna get tempted and touch things as well. Your spouse, your other half, whatever, roommate, all of those types of people that might come into contact with a machine that don't have the understanding that you do is a recipe for disaster. Friends, when they come to visit and stuff, they will see these things and just be like, oh, what's this? And like magpies with shiny things go to touch it. 
So that's why having a separate space is always ideal and you want to make sure that you keep it as safe as possible. But the golden rule to remember is that when that resin is in its liquid form, before it has been cleaned up, before that model has been cured, it is not safe to touch and you shouldn't be breathing in the fumes that come off of it as well. If you can always bear that in mind and the space that's going to then be contaminating, then you're pretty much golden. If you can do stuff to prevent it from then being exposed, then that's good. Anyway, safety bit aside, to move on to the next stage. So your miniatures have now printed. Next stage is you've got to get them off the build plate. So at this stage, they will look like something like this that I'll have on screen. Hopefully, I've managed to capture that. Basically, your minis are now on to the build plate. So they're hanging upside down. They're in their scaffolding support. You now need to take off your build plate. Ideally, have something like a drip tray underneath your build plate. So you unscrew it and fasten it however your printer works. Slide it off with a drip tray underneath it that catches any drippage that is coming off of those miniatures as they're coming off here. You can then either put the whole build plate into a wash machine. Depending on what kind of wash machine you've got or wash setup that you've got, you might be able to put the whole thing into there and then start to clean it. Otherwise, you can scrape your models off and then put them into the wash machine or wash solution or whatever it is that you're doing to wash your models. Pop your build plate back onto the printer so it's out of the way. And you want to use something like a little silicon squeegee just to kind of move around in the vat of resin to make sure that you don't have any bits of like cured resin or any bits that have like broken off the models and stuff like that. Just make sure that that is all nice and clean. Because if you don't and you go to print your next batch of models, what will happen is the plate will slowly lower into that vat. These printers are stupid, like they're really stupid. And then it'll crunch into that bit of cured resin, put it through the FEP sheet, maybe even your screen and break it. And even in the ones that have like auto detection, so they're meant to detect when there's pressure there. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. I've seen many videos where they don't work. I've seen many videos where they do work. In my experience, I've had many times where they do work. I've also had many times where they just don't work as well. So bear that in mind, you need to make sure that that vat is nice and clean. Anyway, you've done your cleanup, you put your printer back to the settings it needs to be, ready for its next print. Moving across onto the models. They're now in their wash setup. So whether or not that's a wash machine or you've got your own wash setup, you then need to get them all nice and clean. How I do this is I have a two-step process. First thing I do is I put them into my big dirty wash. So this is IPA, so alcohol that's been exposed to resin numerous times, so it's quite cloudy, it's quite messy. I dip my models into that and I give them a good sloshing up and down. Now, as I'm doing this hand motion here, I just want to remind you, at this stage, you should have gloves on, you should have a mask on, you should have eye protection on. Because if you get any of this in your eyes, if you're breathing in these fumes, especially these alcohol fumes, they're horrible, it's not good for you. So make sure that you are protected. So I slosh it up and down in that dirty bath. Once that's done, pull them out, let them drip for a bit, and then I take them over into some clean IPA in my wash station. Now, this is the Hay Gears one that basically you put it into a container and then it spins it really aggressively. I leave that for about three minutes, I take them across, I then take them out and then I let them dry. Now, whilst they are drying, I tend to start pulling them off of the support. Now, the supports are there to help the print print successfully. And before you move on to the next stage, which is curing your models, you need to remove your supports. Don't do this afterwards, otherwise you will have loads of like little craters and puck marks and it's just a disaster waiting to happen, so don't do it. Pull them off of the support at this stage. Use a scalpel, use clippers, whatever you need to to get away from some of those fiddly bits. A tip that often works really well is to make sure that these things are heated up. So if you have a heat gun, you can give them a bit of a blast and then they pull off nicely. You can get hot water and dip your models into those and then it just helps to soften that resin a little bit and you can pull it away. It leaves a few less craters, makes it a bit easier to remove those supports. So slowly remove all your support and then make sure that your models are dry. Now, the reason I say you need to make sure your models are dry is if you take your models and you cure them whilst it's still got that IPA and they're still wet and stuff like that, you will sometimes see some like chalkiness, sometimes some stickiness once the model is cured, which is really annoying. So let them have a really good dry. If you have something like a heat gun, giving them a blast will often basically help that IPA to evaporate. In the Hay Gears cure station I've got, it's got a heating facility on it beforehand, which is really handy. Some other cure stations will have that as well. So whatever it is that you do, make sure they're dried and they look nice and dry before you move on to the curing bit. Moving on to curing, depending on the resin that you're using, you'll cure them for different lengths of time. There's a couple of ways that you can cure. The basic one that most people will be using is you will put them into a UV source. A lot of the time you will get a wash station and a cure station as like, you know, either a combined unit or two separate units that you buy as one thing. So you'll pop them into your cure station 
leave them for a couple of minutes, and what that will do is that will do the final stage of curing your models. Bear in mind that even at this stage, you should not be touching these models with your bare skin. You need to still be masked up, eye protection, gloves on to handle these models as they're going into the curing station, even though you have washed them and thoroughly like cleaned them up. Before you can do any touching of them with your bare hands, you must cure your models. Once they are cured, you're good to go. You can finally handle those models with your bare hands. Again, just one point to bear in mind is you might still need a mask on if you're around this area because you're gonna have fumes that are kicking around from the IPA, fumes from the resin, fumes from the curing process as well in that curing station as well. So there's a lot of things there where there might still be some fumes lingering. So you probably wanna still mask up. Unless of course you've got a really good ventilation source that's pulling all of that out and getting fresh air in. Now they are cured, you're good to go. And you can then just start doing what you would normally do with your resin prints. You can put them onto the bases, you can get them primed and all of that as well. Now I don't want this video to scare people off. This isn't a video to say, hey, don't resin 3D print. Resin 3D printing is amazing. I love resin 3D printing miniatures. There's so many things and benefits that it brings in terms of flexibility in the model types. Amazing random things I can print off for like my Blood Angels. I've got all these extra parts as well. The amount of armies and stuff I can print off as well. There's loads of positives of it, but often I am seeing so many people getting into this with just buying the resin 3D printer, or they might be buying the resin 3D printer, a cure station and a wash station, but none of the extra stuff and not necessarily knowing. And I do think a lot of that comes down to us, YouTubers, and not necessarily just me, but a lot of people, because in our videos you will see, oh, I've downloaded this awesome kit and I'm gonna print and paint it up in this. And we'll show very brief bits of some of those stages, but it's the boring bit. And if you see it time and time again, people get bored of it. But some people will see one of those videos and go, oh wow, that looks fast and efficient and easy. And then go on and look for a resin 3D printer. So I just wanted to show some of the realities so that way people can make an informed decision when they're buying these and also just make sure they've got all the kit. Because the last thing I want to do is have somebody go out there and buy, I don't know, one of the latest resin 3D printers. They get it to their house and go, this is fantastic. And they go to set it up and realize, ah, there's loads of extra bits that maybe I should buy as well. And that then puts them off the hobby altogether. I'd rather someone make an informed decision, get all the stuff that they need and go into this fully equipped and ready to go. There's also probably loads of other stuff as well to consider. There's the pros and cons versus, you know, some people say that it's cheaper to just buy the resin 3D printer versus buying an army from Games Workshop. Your mileage may vary depending on what sort of printer you buy, what sort of resins you buy as well. Water washable versus non-water washable, flexible versus like non-flexible. There's so many other things to consider, but obviously there's all sorts of bits of research you can do for that. So I hope that video has helped. If you're looking at maybe buying a resin 3D printer because, you know, reasons, prices of miniatures from big name brands, maybe it's that you just want some of that flexibility, whatever it is, hopefully that just helps to give you an idea of what actually goes into some of that back end so you, when you start doing this for yourself, you understand a little bit better. You can get something like a grow tent, you can make sure your ventilation is set up, you can choose a more appropriate location to put your resin 3D printer, so that way you don't have a disaster. And I just wanna really reiterate the point that I am not an expert when it comes to the science or health and safety when it comes to resin 3D printing. There's loads of arguments online. Some people say if you look at resin, you will die instantly because, you know, alarmists. And some people say, well, it's fine, just drink the stuff. Obviously, very, very different ends of the spectrum. I don't think anyone actually says either of those things, but if you look online, the arguments tend to fall just really far on the left and the right. There's a middle ground there. And until there's a long-term bit of research on that, or until we get you know years and years and years down the line of people using these things with no real adverse health effects, I'm gonna err on the side of caution because I don't wanna be that person who ends up having breathed in all these fumes or touched it and have an issue. And you don't wanna be that person either. So make sure you stay safe, make sure you follow the steps and understand the actual process behind resin 3D printing. So, Long rant there, long talking heads video, but I hope that has helped at least some of you out there if you are looking at buying one of these machines. In the meantime, enjoy your 3D printing. If you've got any questions, throw them down below or head on over to my Discord channel because there's more people you can ask over there as well. And hopefully I will see you in the next one. Take care, bye.